making outlines is challenging. At least that's what I thought a few years ago. So let me save you from years of trouble by showing you all the secret techniques I use now. First, let's make an outline with gaps. One day ago, I would have made this with a skin modifier, which is time consuming. Fortunately, I discovered an insane workflow while making this video. Duplicate the object, apply all the modifiers, and only keep the edges where you want the outlines. Delete the rest. Right click, convert it to grease pencil. When you do this, a keyframe gets created on the frame where the playhead is at the moment. To avoid from disappearing outlines, move the keyframe to the start of the animation. Scale it up in edit mode. Change the colors, but remember to uncheck use lights here. Adjust the thickness with Alt S or the thickness modifier. And now here comes the fun part. Add the dot and dash modifier, and if you adjust the numbers a bit, you'll get a pretty great result right off the bat. But if you want to customize it, switch to draw mode, select the eraser, and erase the unwanted parts. By the way, if you want full control over the gaps, don't use this modifier, just erase the lines manually. If the gaps are huge, subdivide the outline in edit mode. And magically, the gaps are smaller. Damn! Wow! And since this is a grease pencil object, we can add cool modifiers and effects to it. Enable Z pass to render the outline correctly. Second, real time compositing is available since Blender 3.5. So I'm gonna show you how to make a silhouette outline with it. It only works if you set the background transparent. Go to the Compositing tab and set up a viewport window below. Click on Always to enable real time compositing. Check Use Nodes. Add an alpha over node and a dilate road. Connect the alpha to the mask and the mask into the top image input. You can extrude this mask and it gives you an outline. Switch the distance for round corners. But you can see if two objects are overlapping, the effect doesn't work as expected. So delete this plane. To change the color of the outline and the background, put an other alpha over node here and connect the mask into the factor. The first color input is for the background and the second one is for the outline. Whenever you add a new object to the scene, an outline gets created around it. And it doesn't stop there. Look at these cool effects. Try out different note combinations and you'll be impressed. This button likes getting pressed. The next one is the inverted hull method. I'm gonna show you two ways. The most popular one and the less known but more powerful one. The popular one is with solidify modifier, which is the third method. Before I show you, apply the scale and recalculate the normals in edit mode. Select everything with A and hit shift N, cause if the normals are messed up, the outline won't work. All right, add the new material for the outline, use an emission, speedrunner just hit E, change the color, enable back face culling. Then add the solidify modifier, flip the normals and set the material offset to one. So it uses the outline material, adjust the thickness. If you have multiple materials applied, make sure the outline is the last one and set the material offset accordingly or just crank the hell up. You can clamp the thickness here for a cleaner result. This is actually new to me as well. And you have an outline. Five life-saving tips. First, if you have an object with sharp edges and loop cuts, the outline gets funky. Check even thickness to fix that. Second, you can customize the thickness with a vertex group. Switch to weight paint mode. I'm using a gradient here, but you can use anything. Different falloff methods are available here. When you paint on the object, a new vertex group gets created, which can be selected here. You can invert it and mix it with the original outline. You can get creative with it. Third, the outline casts shadow on the base mesh. You can turn it off here. Fourth, you can make the outline visible in the viewport by checking this box. Fifth, in Eevee everything works fine. If you switch the cycles though, oh my God, what is that? the outline doesn't work as expected. Just enable back face culling. Oh. Wait, cycles doesn't have that option. So you gotta make your own back face culling. Let's make that. Select the outline material and mix the emission with the transparent shader and connect the geometry nodes back face socket into the factor and voila. Fourth, we are done with the solidify method, let me show you the more powerful setup. Okay, let's go. It's made with geometry nodes. Basically, I'll make a solidify modifier from scratch, but it will be way more customizable. That's why it's more powerful. But don't worry, it's simple. Select the object and create a new node group at the set position. With this node, we can change the object in some way. Since we want to offset the outline along the normals, plug a normal node into the offset. It's that easy. Adjust the scale of it with the vector math node set to scale and you are good to go. 
This is our outline. What? I know, I know, it doesn't look like that. Just, just please give me some time. Join the base geometry with the outline. And basically, you just made your own solidify modifier. Impressive. To make that flippity flabbity normal flip, add the flip faces note here. Now, set the outline's material. But make sure back face culling is enabled on that one. That's important. And ta-da, you have your outline. Wasn't that bad, was it? And this was just the tip of the iceberg. With geonodes, the possibilities are endless. I mean, look at this animation. It's not possible with a solidify modifier. If you wanna learn this, wait for a future video. Fifth, did you know that you can make outlines with curves? Not like that, but more like a secondary outline. Quick basics, then I'm gonna show you a trick that blew my mind. At the curve circle, you can change the thickness here and adjust it till you are satisfied with it. All right, check this out. Here's a liquid, which is see-through. Here's an outline, which is completely normal. Or is it? It's not as simple as you think. Let me show you how it's done. Duplicate the liquid and keep an edge like with the grease pencil method. But this time, convert it to curve. Change the thickness and blah blah blah. The curve is clipping through the liquid. You might think, let's scale it up. Not a bad guess, but no. Here comes the mind-blowing part. Change the fill mode to half. This cuts the curve in half, which means if you tilt it in edit mode with Ctrl T, or here, and enable backface cutting on the material, that part will be invisible. And it's no longer clipping through the liquid. 7 days free, Patreon, quickest 20 viewers, go! Sixth, you can make outlines with shaders. Mix an emission with the base shader and connect the layer weight node into the factor. Add the color ramp and change it to constant. This way, the outline has sharp edges. You can adjust the thickness with the sliders. It is visible from every angle and deforms with the spheres. You can use this on other kind of objects as well, but keep in mind that it doesn't work on objects with sharp edges. Seventh, in this project I wanted to make the outline intersections round, so it doesn't have that perfect 3D look. I discovered something that is so easy yet powerful. Let me show you. First of all, you gotta make an outline with the inverted tile method and the curve as the secondary outline. So in between those, you can make a round corner. It's shader based, so select the base shader. Let's do it. Mix an emission with the base shader and make a gradient using the separate XYZ node. Add the mapping node and the texture coordinate node. Set it to object. I'm using the z-axis, but it depends on the rotation of the object. Adjust the mapping till the gradient is visible. Mix this with the layer weight node, for now it looks better. Change this to add and crank up the factor. To make it sharper, add the color ramp and change it to constant. Now, if you plug this into the factor and change the color, you get a round corner. Yay! To get rid of that purpleness, duplicate the gradient, add the color ramp to flip it and change it to constant. Move the black slider a bit and you have a mask. Multiply this with the corner and you got a clean result. And the cool thing about this, it looks good from every angle. Wow. Eighth, if you wanna create outlines faster, use the line art method. Click on the object and hit shift A. Grease pencil, object line art. What's going on here? The outline is calculated from the camera angle, so switch to camera. Lock it here so you can move around in camera mode. You can apply it to the whole scene as well, so when you add the new object, an outline appears around it. What if you want to add an outline to a collection of objects? Just select an object in the collection and choose Collection Line Art. If you select the outline and go to the modifiers, you'll see this Line Art modifier. Here you can adjust the thickness and the outlines method. Change the color here, that's all you need to know. Line Art is a big subject, I will go into more detail in a future video where I show you how to turn a boring outline to a more interesting one. Subscribe so you won't miss it. Ninth, if you are looking for a one-click solution, then Freestyle is for you. Enable it here, and the lines are created once the scene is rendered, so it's not real-time. The thickness can be changed here. Go to View Layer and you can customize it further. A quick overview of the settings. Check this for cleaner lines. You can try out different outline types, add outlines to a specific collection only, change the caps here, change the color, and you can use modifiers on the alpha, the thickness, and the geometry. Tenth, the next technique is great for people who are avoiding using grease pencil, like I've been for years. I'm gonna recreate this outline. Duplicate the object, delete the modifiers. I'll need this bevel later. Delete the unwanted parts and add the skin modifier. 
Change the thickness with Ctrl A in edit mode. Make it smooth with a subsurface modifier. To bevel it, switch to vertices and to angle. The amount can be adjusted. To move a vertex, hit G twice. If you wanna cut the line somewhere, add the loop cut with Ctrl R and detach the vertex with V. But the outline disappeared. <laughs> To fix it, select the vertices and click on Mark Root. When you try to move the vertex with GG, hit C to disable clamping. It looks like a grease pencil object, but acts as a mesh. You don't lose the modifiers and you can apply physics to it, so it's not that bad after all. Now you know the secret techniques. Watch this video if you wanna dive deeper. It's shader based, so it's shader based. Oh. It's shader based, so shall I? It's it's.